Welcome to night number 94 of History Bedtime Stories in bed in our pajamas and tonight is night number two in the ongoing saga of multiple hippopotamuses escaping into the Detroit River. Tonight we're covering the second time this happened. If you're confused by all of that, go back to last night's bedtime story, night number 93, and learn about the first one. That is a sentence I never thought I'd say. Learn about the first hippo that escaped into the Detroit River because tonight we're too busy covering the second one. Now, the second hippopotamus to escape was part of the Barnum Circus, P.T. Barnum Circus. And he was traveling by ferry from Windsor to Detroit, a very, very quick ferry trip. So he is on board this big side wheel steamer named the Jim. And this giant hippopotamus is there with, I kid you not, a lion, a tiger, and three bears. And as all of these animals are being transported across the river, a couple of the large cats start really clawing at their cage, and one is able to escape. Now, as this large cat escapes and the handlers rush to force it back into its cage, the hippopotamus, which was only chained, well, he backs himself right off the boat. He goes right into the river and quickly swims off. And Barnum was happy to pay. When he heard by telegram that his $40,000 swam off, he offered a huge reward, $1,000 for its safe capture and return. But the muskrat trappers, the fishermen, the sailboaters, and the dockhands of the Detroit River and Lake St. Clair, none of them had anything to capture a hippopotamus. So now you've got a loose hippopotamus, you've got the city of Detroit in the 1860s not really knowing how dangerous hippos were. Should we stop all of the swimmers on Belle Isle? Should we stop freighter traffic in the river, the busiest freshwater shipping channel in the world? But the hippo is spotted a few times over the next three days. Eventually, five miles downstream and three days after his great escape, the hippo climbs ashore in Essex, Ontario. Essex, Ontario, even at the time, was becoming the radish capital of Canada, and the hippo smells the radishes. He climbs ashore and he starts gorging himself on all of these delicious Canadian radishes. And as he's eating and eating, the radish farmers are terrified. He's actually on the property of a radish farmer named Pete Nadeau. And Pete is like, holy crap, it's a hippo! He goes running into the woods. He eventually gathers other Essex farmers to come help him in what he thinks will be a capture of the hippo. But when he comes back several hours later, the hippopotamus has eaten through a full acre and a half of radishes and fallen asleep happy and full. They call the circus, the Barnum Circus comes, they're able to um, restrain the, the hippopotamus, lead him onto a small boat, and ferry him over to Detroit. When he arrives in Detroit, he is given a handful of Michigan carrots and welcomed to the city as the second hippo who's escaped in a decade. I hope you've been enjoying history bedtime stories. Oddly, lots of animals have escaped over the years in Detroit. If you're able to find one of them, anything from Jefferson the cow to Betty the sheep, by Googling and researching and put links to those stories in the below section, we will reward the first person with each new animal escapee with a series of Detroit vinyl stickers. We hope you're enjoying History Bedtime Stories. Wash your hands.